Hello FlossTube, this is Deb or Deborah, Science Knitster. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my crafting, mainly cross stitch and some knitting. Um, I also do spinning, uh, weaving, um, basically quilting, <laughs> anything with needles and fiber, pretty much. Um, my problem is every craft I try, I like. Um, so, um, <clears throat> today is Saturday, March 16th, um, and it's been about six weeks since I recorded, so I am long overdue. I had planned to record, um, like, for the last week or two, especially this past week. I've been on spring break. I teach at a local community college, and um, I've been on spring break this week, but I ended up kind of hibernating and just reading and doing a few things around the house. Um, so um, I, it wasn't, I kind of started coming out of hibernation the last couple of days, got back into some stitching and decided it was past time to record a floss tube. So um, I want to welcome everyone. I um, have had a few new subscribers since my last um, video. Um, and so a welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back. Um, and um, I enjoyed the comments on the last video. So please feel free to leave comments. Um, if you see anything that you like or um, have questions about, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I do usually respond within 24 hours. Excuse me. So this morning, actually it's just before noon, um, I have some iced tea that I made yesterday with my favorite um, loose tea from Stash, uh, Super Irish Breakfast. And um, it is in the 80s here now. Ooh, that's a big cup when I put it there. Um, it's in the 80s here now um, during the day. So um, early summer <laughs> instead of spring. <laughs> So since we try not to turn the air on, the AC on until um, it gets quite warm, um, I thought yesterday it was time for some iced tea. So, um, so I'm here to talk about my stitching today, and I do have a little bit of knitting. Sometimes I talk about science, um, but I don't think we're going to have time for that today. But first um, off, I'd like to show you some finishes I've had in the last month. I think all of these, let me just double check real quick. All of these um, were things I started, except maybe one of them. Things I started, I'm looking, checking my book of days. Okay, all but two of the three I'm gonna show you were um, starts from January or February. Um, before my my last video. So I did finish Heart and Hands um, Winter Fling. Um, let's see. I did make one substitution with the uh, sort of gray blue there. Um, this was a kit. Um, it came as a kit. It's old. I don't, it's not, as far as I know, it's not uh, available anymore, except maybe on the secondary market. Um, it came with this fabric which is, it looks like a 32 count, but it could have been a 25. I can't remember. Um, but it came with the fabric as well as all the threads. Um, they were all over dies. Um, and I used all of them except the sort of uh, blue gray color of the cup and the earmuffs and so forth. It was Grape Arbor and um, I just didn't like the purpleness of it. I wanted something more blue. Um, so I, I chose this and I don't remember now what it was, but I did write it down somewhere. <laughs> um, so these were part of a series, a seasonal series. Um, and I actually got down the spring one that I did quite a few years ago. Um, it actually should be hanging up there. Um, I just put my spring stuff out yesterday. So I'm, all of the others 
well, in, including this one, there was a frame you um, you could buy, but I could never find the frame for winter. So I'm going to try, it was blue in this crackle finish. Um, so I'm gonna try to find some molding similar to this, uh, or maybe even a frame similar to this of the right size and frame this um, myself. But there's the spring fling. Um, from several years ago. I'm going to put this up here so I don't forget to put it back up, but but here's winter. I stitched summer last year or the year before, um, and I um, still need to stitch fall. Okay, so the um, second finish, actually this was the, the might have been the first of the three finishes. Um, this is Peppermint Panda by the Blue Flower. It was her ornament in the um, Jingle Ball Bobbles book. Um, so I also stitched this for the Book It Sal that Helen D. East Coast Crafter is um, doing. And um, I don't think she's the originator and I forget who the originator is, but. So I stitched this on 28 Count Weeks Dye Works Gingerbread um, using the DMC that, um, Janine called for, except this color here was supposed to be one of those variegated DMCs, and I could have got it at the local, my local Hobby Lobby, but I decided to use an over dye from my stash, and I don't remember which one I chose. Might have been, might have even been gingerbread from, um, <coughs> or something, ginger something from uh, the general art. I'm pretty sure it was a gentle art. And then my other finish was a Valentine's one. Um, this was a freebie from um, Shannon Christine. Uh, what, she had several Valentine's freebies out. And <clears throat> I stitched this on an 18 count natural linen using um, pearl cotton, mainly the called for. Uh, I did sub a few colors. Um, so I think actually the main pink here is um, Classic Color Works, I think. But if you follow me on social media, I think I posted there what I subbed. Actually, I probably did for all of these. Okay, so I'm gonna put this somewhere. I think I'll just set it here underneath the stuff. My market haul. Um, one last thing, a almost fully finished. Um, so I, I started finishing this. It's a flat fold, um, or easel back, however you want to call that. Um, this is an old freebie from Rainbow Gallery that was, it was a whole series. Um, I'm getting ready to work on March now and get that done. So I actually got this done before the end of February so I could put it up, um, uh, I still need to put cording, uh, but <clears throat> I'm going to wait until I um, have several of them done and just like make a bunch of cording one afternoon. I have all the pearl cotton picked out um, and set aside. Okay. And then I also had several new starts in February. So that freebie from Shannon Christine, the um, love mug small, I think is what she called it, was a February start. And then um, I also started, let's see. This one, this is the collector's heart from 2004. I started this in February. I'm not quite done with this one. I'm um, basically just doing the specialty stitches and then I need to sew on the buttons. Um, I'm using all the called for threads except um, I didn't have the right color. I didn't have, I couldn't find my Lancaster red. I have some somewhere. So I subbed, let's see, it's still here. So I think it's mulberry. Yes, General Art Smallberry. So I subbed that for um, the Lancaster, and I think it turned out pretty.
be good. Um, and of course, I needed, um, I had to make up my own two there, uh, make it fit. Um, and I, I think it turned out pretty good. So, um, <clears throat> so I need to finish putting in the specialty stitches um, around the border. Okay, oops. So, um, <clears throat> should say the, um, the panda was, and the um, winter fling were stitched um, two threads over two linen threads. And um, that's the same thing for this one. Um, I'm, this came with the buttons and the fabric. So the linen, I can't remember what, it's a 30, it's 32 count dirty Belfast linen, so. Okay. And then another start, um, I had start on, let's see, that one was started, I think early in, maybe that wasn't a new start, yes, that was started on the 10th, the love mug I actually started on the 11th, um, I actually was stitching the love bug during the superb owl, um, stitch in, virtual stitch in retreat, whatever you want to call it, that um, Lindy Stitches and Hands On Design put on. Um, okay. And then um, on the 14th, I started with love from um, Modern Folk Embroidery, Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. Oops. <gasps> Um, so for the stitching Salentine, um, with Evertote and Roxy Flasco. Um, so I'm using all the called for. Here's the thread. I am stitching this one on, um, 40 count, uh, 40 count porcelain, Roxy Flasco porcelain, um, one thread over two linen threads. And then um, this bag is from um, Corey Creates, uh, although her Etsy shop has a different name. She doesn't have a tag on here, and I forgot to grab the info. Um, but I actually, this bag is a little bit bigger than I was expecting because I didn't actually read the description carefully enough, but I like it. Um, so I actually ordered um, a, a St. Patrick's. One, um, cause I have a project that I want to put in it that I will talk about later, but, um, so I'm just going to keep this one in here. The Salentine ran from, um, February 14th to March 14th. Obviously I'm not finished. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to try to work on this one the 14th of every month till I'm done. And I'm going to personalize it with my husband's and mine initials. Um, it'll actually, um, I think it'll coordinate pretty well with a um, wedding gift um, sampler that one of his cousins um, actually stitched as a wedding gift for us. Uh, and that actually had reframed quite a few years ago. So I might see if I can get a similar frame for this one at some point. Um, but that, and I should have brought that down so you could see that. But I'm pretty sure this will, um, it was also pinks and blues and, and I think it will coordinate pretty well. Okay. Then um, another stitch along that started on the 14th, but I didn't start mine until I think the 16th. Was a new stitch on um, hands across the sea stitch along through traditional stitches and Johnson 1832. I think I showed my kit for this last time. I ordered the 46 count linen um, 
with the 103s. So it's gonna be a little slow stitching. Um, so this was the freebie that came with it. Uh, and I'm, um, since there's a lot of pink in this sampler, I chose to, um, this is a old um, needle minder that I've had for a while. So I chose to use that one with this. Um, that was the, the gift. But here is my linen and my minuscule start. So I'm actually behind already. Um, so I need to get on the stick and get February done and then start working on March. Um, but it's a beautiful sampler. The linen is, um, I think it's Tabby Cat. Yes, Tickety Boo by Tabby Cat. And I am stitching with the 103s. I swelled all by, um, not swelled all day by, this is the SWA 103s by Excess Commodities. Okay. Yes, I have it just a teeny tiny start. I had actually hoped that I would finish the um, modern folk embroidery stitch along. Um, that was my plan, but then I didn't stitch for almost a week, so. Okay, so um, my last new start in February was a um, leap day start. And like many people, I wanted to choose something large that um, I would work on periodically and with the goal of finishing it by the next leap day. So four years. <laughs> so um, I chose his Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Sampler. This is something that I um, had pretty much kitted up except for a few threads that I was missing. Um, and then I ended up using the fabric that I had set aside, the linen I had set aside, which was 36 count, picture this plus doubloon. But then I was able to get some 40 count doubloon. I think I got it from Kitten Stitcher. Um, so I went ahead and decided I was going to start this one. Um, and here is my start. Um, so I just worked on it on leap day that evening. Um, I don't think I worked on it. Yeah, I worked on it that evening and I didn't work on it. I haven't worked on it again since. So, um, so I definitely will try to work on it like the 29th of each month, but I need to, another day of the week that I will plan to, to work on it. Okay. So those are all my new starts for February, but then just this morning, whoops, I just need to go back in there. Um, just this morning, I decided to go ahead and start um, something that I had put it up several weeks ago when I was on a um, a Google Meet virtual stitching that Abby Bella Stitch runs on Tuesdays that I always want to go to, but either I'm too tired, I have too much work, I have another meeting. <laughs> um, but anyway, they were all stitching last time. Um, Rebecca Nurse by The Primitive Hair. If I remember correctly, um, Abby was planning to visit or wants to visit the actual site. Um, it, and it's mentioned, there's a picture of the actual site in the pattern. Um, so, so while we were on the Google Meet, I was actually on my laptop 
but I had it hooked up to an external monitor. So I went to the other monitor and ordered this from Etsy. <laughs> and I had all the, the threads. It's just DMC. The called for fabric is um, vintage country mocha. Um, so I started, this was my start from this morning. Um, so this is 36 count um, vintage country mocha. So I'm stitching one thread over two linen threads. Um, pretty much any 36 count and up, I stitch um, one over two. I know some people prefer two threads on 36 count, but I do not. So that's my, my little start. So hopefully I'll be able to join in this Tuesday. So those are all my new starts. Um, so, um, since it's been a while, I do actually have quite a few other things that I've worked on at least a little bit. Um, so let me actually... Let's see, what order do I want to do this in? Okay, I'll do this one first. Okay, so on Friday nights, um, and I've been pretty good about it, I have um, been joining uh, uh, Michelle Cozyeg and um, some others. Um, just, um, we don't like meet virtually or anything, but um, <laughs> there's a Facebook group called Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow. I think that's what it, something like that. Um, it's a private group, but folks post their progress. Um, so I'm um, working on this first block of, of the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. So you can work on any Hawk Run Hollow. Um, and, and so I am doing my best to, um, to keep working on this on Fridays. And so far, I've been pretty good. I usually um, work on it on Fridays after dinner. These are the D I'm using the DMCs. Um, so I've actually had these on thread drops. Um, when did I kick this up? In 2020, and I started it in May of 2020 um, as part of my Mermenia. Um, so I was actually had gone over to block three that has a mermaid in it, but I decided to go back and do it block by block. Um, so, and I realized I actually messed up up here. And so my um, lighthouse is one row too short. So I had to add a row here so that this block would be the same size as the others. Um, so I worked this Friday Last Friday, I worked on this. This Friday, I worked on getting some of the water in because I realized I was off over here and I wasn't sure if this was off, the border was off, or this was off and it turned out um, I'm one stitch too close to the light lighthouse over here somewhere. And I counted off of there. So I'm just gonna fudge it. I'm not gonna take out the sun. Um, I'll just add another because it has to meet up the border. Um, anyway, um, so I, I worked on some of the, the water. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do up here. And then when I figured out I was one stitch too close over here, I was like, okay, I'm just going to fudge it. Um, so I, I may try to finish the water next Friday or, or finish the sun. I'm not sure which. It also depend, probably depend on how much stitching time I have. Like I said, usually I work on it after dinner on Fridays. Okay. And then, a couple other things. Um, So I joined a stitch along that um, Catherine of Needleberry, um, Catherine Needleberry Stitcher and some of her friends, um, Catherine sets up a Zoom on the first Saturday of the month and um, we're stitching 
Strawberry Fields Forever by Blackbird Designs. Uh, it's part of the um, Magical Mystery Tour series. I have a couple of these, but I, I'd like to try to get the rest of them. So I am stitching this on a 36 count linen from my stash using the called for over dies. Um, and here, so basically, let's see, I started this in January, I think. Um, so I could have it going for the first Saturday of February. And then, um, so I worked on it the first Saturday of February, and then I worked on it the first Saturday of March. Um, and so I probably will mainly just work on these, the, this the first Saturday of the month. But I'm trying to get down to the house. Um, and I think one of the issues was I was missing a color. And I need to leave this out because I need to remember what I decided to do. I can't remember if I was going to order it or if I was just going to sub the DMC. Looks like I decided to sub the DMC. Okay. I have Pelican Gray somewhere, but I don't know what project it's in. <laughs> okay. So since that one is 36 count, I am stitching it one over two. And I'm using the called for over dies on that one. Uh, let's see, um, just a couple more. So I, another stitch along that I'm part of is the, um, oh, this is actually uh, the stitch pen. Um, so this is Harriet Hay by Mill on the Floss, AKA Tabby Cat. Um, and this is actually the stitch plan rather than the, the picture 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 um because I didn't print out the picture picture I'm stitching this from um the pdf I actually prefer to stitch from pdfs especially when designers um offer and Jacob does this with uh, all his patterns now it has I think for a couple of years um especially if they provide a one page one that you can you know blow up on your iPad or whatever. Um, so I'm stitching this on the called for linen, which is, um, I think it's, I know it's a lakeside. I think it's sand, vintage sand dune. Uh, and I'm doing, I did my own over dye conversion. So I'm not actually quite stitching on the plan. <laughs> I'm, um, I had, I was pretty, I'm trying to keep, Excuse me. I'm trying to keep very hard to keep up this with this one, but I haven't worked on it since late February. Um, so actually, um, I wasn't paying attention and I forget why, but I decided to go down rather than over. Once I finished, I actually finished um, the stitching for January a little bit early and decided to go down here instead of over here. Um, I think probably because I thought it was easier to count from here count from something somewhere in here to get down here anyway um so I'm gonna stitch this one this month and then stitch this in April um so that for May I'll be on the house where I should be which is actually a good month for me to be on the house because I'll be done with spring term mid-May and have more time um Plus, once those windows are in, it should be pretty fast to, and, and mindless to stitch. But, yes, so, so I actually have April pretty much done. Um, and so I'm going to go over here now and stitch what I should have stitched in February. I'll stitch that for March. And if you're interested in my conversion, just let me know. Um, generally, I tweak it until I'm finished. <laughs> and I've got, I think I've actually 
changed a couple of colors already. So for March is Stitch Asia Month. So I got out, um, this is, it's a stitch along uh, that Abby Bella Stitch runs. And you can stitch anything that's Asian themed by um, Asian designer. Um, and actually Abby's been posting on Instagram um, every day. Um, like either about Asian designers or Asian stitchers. Um, it's been very interesting. Um, actually, I just caught up this morning because I haven't been paying much attention to social media. <laughs> so um, I am stitching Jacob um, Modern Folk Embroidery, the Hiragana Sampler, and I'm mashing it up with the... Uh, katakana sampler um, and I'm doing it um, I'm personalizing it um, in honor of the 1993 um, National Science Foundation Japan uh, in Summer Institute in Japan that I participated in and I'd actually had hoped to finish this last year you can see I haven't even finished the hiragana part, um, but I um, had wanted to finish it last year because then it would have been 30 years since I participated, but that's okay. Um, so the hiragana and katakana are two of the alphabets used in Japan. Katakana is used for foreign words. Hiragana is used for Japanese words, and it's the first alphabet that children learn. Um, and then they learn the kanji that actually comes from the, and it's the same as the Chinese kanji. Um, so I've got the width of the sampler done. So now I'm filling in the hiragana. Um, and then uh, in the middle here, um, I'm still deciding exactly how I want to do this, but um, I'm going to have my name in katakana and then um, uh, something and, and I can't decide if I may do that at the bottom and just like in the middle here have 1993 Summer Institute in Japan um, but I need to find an alphabet to, and chart that. I'm stitching this on a 32 count um, cream Zweigart linen with um, some old needle necessities from my stash um, and somewhere I have written down what the Threadworks equivalent of this is because um, Threadworks bought Needle Necessities and has their colors. Um, and I don't remember where I wrote it down. I know I have it in my Backstitch app, but. Um. Okay, so <clears throat> hopefully I'll get this put together properly, but, uh, and I'm not sure exactly where it cut out, but I ran out of space on my iPad. Um, in the middle of discussing the key by uh, Barbara Anna. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show that again, just in case um, I have to trim it. And hopefully I'll be able to get these two parts together into one video. Um, so here is my progress on the key by Barbara Anna. I am stitching it and 32 count, um, I believe it's Mediterranean Sea. It's either by Witchell or um, Swigert. I think it's Witchell actually. Uh, and that's a little, well, it's a little bit greener than it's showing. It's sort of a pale blue green. Anyway. Um, so I'm using the called for floss stitching with two threads of floss over two linen threads. 
And that is it for my whips. Um, so next, I think I want to show you some of the um, things I've accumulated uh, since my last floss tube. Some of them were things I had ordered a while ago. Um, so let me start with that. Um, I don't think I showed these last time. I had ordered this um, from Hobby House Needleworks. A present for a friend by Hands Across the Sea. It is exclusive to Hobby House. Um, I bought a whole kit. So it also came with the linen and I chose the 40 count linen. This is Tabby Cat. Uh, what was it? Um, the Cat's Whiskers. Um, and I chose the 103s, since there was only four of them. Two reds and two blues. Um, so, and since I bought a full kit, I also got a little gift that came in this gift bag. A little gift thing. Um, and it's a scissor holder. I've been using it for my favorite scissors. Um, and it has elements, so the top has the whole sampler, and then the sides have elements, and the bottom have elements from the sampler. So. And then, um, in addition, I ordered at the same time some extra designs on um, morning coffee. This is a fat quarter. Um, so it's a, a light brown. Um, it's coming across redder, uh, at least on my screen, than it is in real life. But, um, so I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this when I first got it, but um, there is a chart by Teresa Kogert. Co Teresa Kogut um, from the 2020 Spring 2020 Punch Needle um, and Primitive Stitcher magazine, um, a little bunny that's on a dark, dark linen. Um, so I, I'm thinking I might use it for that, or or wait till a sampler comes out that's on a, a dark linen. This is a nice piece. I almost hate to cut into it. Um, Okay, so that was from the Hobby House. Uh, and then a while ago, and this just came recently, um, Cedar River Linens, um, which I'd heard about on um, Brenda and the Serial Starter and a couple other places on YouTube, um, had new colors out. So I decided to order some. Um, so I got coffee stain, 40 count coffee stain. It's a real pretty color. And actually I was just watching the New, Ham the New Hampshire Stitcher. Is it New Hampshire Stitcher? Yeah, I think it's New Hampshire Stitcher this morning. And she had, I don't think she got this one, um, but she'd gotten a couple of the new colors also. So this definitely looks like it's been coffee stained. Um, oh, and um, Nicola Parkman, also showed this and um, actually the other one I'm going to show um, on a higher count. So, so that's Cedar, oops, Cedar River. And then I also got um, Maple Bar. I got 40 count, fat quarter of 40 count, and a fat quarter of 36 count. I wanted to try the 36. I do like stitching some things on 36 count. Although 40 has been my go-to lately. So I like the denseness of the threads a little better now that I'm used to stitching on it. Okay, so that's linen. Um, and then uh, Abby Bella Stitch is doing, or was doing a D-stash. So I got a couple of things. Um, 
Darlino Steen, the Needle, Needles Praise, uh, an early American teaching sampler. So very simple sampler. Um, I've got some specialty stitches. It looked like fun, so I got that. And then um, she had a couple of bright needles that she was giving up. So this is Twin Heart Sampler. Or maybe I'll stitch one of those for Valentine's next year. And then the other one is Evensong. So, um, if you're a returning viewer, you might recall that Bright Needle is um, one of my favorite designers. And I have been, since when they stopped designing, I was sort of kicking myself for not like getting all their designs. <laughs> Back in the day, um, oh, and then also Abby sent this freebie that came from, this is from Kirsten Schmidt. Homespun Samplar, it looks like. I'm not sure. Maybe that was the store or maybe that was the designer. Anyway, it's got bees and a bee scap is some of my favorite things. Okay, and I keep pulling myself out of the frame. I need to stop doing that. So, um, needlework market. <laughs> I was not planning on buying anything until later. Um, and then I started watching the Lindy Stitches videos. Um, so I ordered a few things, um, more than a few things, <laughs> from Carla and Cobwood Corner, Lindy Stitches, and Abby Topknot. Um, so from um, Carla, I got Bendy Stitches um, Needle Needle Heathen Biscornu, and Sambri Stitches. Um, is it Frida Altman 1913? So, this is a small, um, more modern red sampler. Um, and so, there's a little bit of info about um, Frida um, that. Um, Rebecca was able to figure out, find out, doing a little research. And then from Lindy Stitches. So I mainly got um, smaller things. There are some samplers and larger pieces that I really want, but I decided to wait on those. Some of those, um, so for example, there's a couple of pieces from... Uh, the blue flower that I um, would really like, but um, she'll eventually put them out on PDF and um, for larger things, uh, especially if the designer will publish them all on one page, I prefer um, I prefer that. So, um, so I, and then I also decided to concentrate on smaller things just to have something to stitch in because I've got several larger pieces going this year. Um, so one is the Vineyard Fair by October House. Uh, so I have, I have a couple of these, I forget which ones already. One I have kitted up, um, but I probably will um, do this one relatively soon. Um, we like grapes and wine. Uh, where my spouse grew up uh, in the area they nearby, uh, <clears throat> there were a lot of grapes, mainly Concord, grown for Welches, um, and most a lot of those have been converted to vineyards now. So I thought it would be fun to stitch this. And then I got the Any Tiny Town and 
more any tiny town. Um, I also want to eventually get the frosty tiny town that came out, but since these were um, proceeds were going to, um, I think it was Habitat for Humanity, I decided to get these now rather than later. Um, and I do, I've started collecting these and I have several of them and I do plan to get more. I'm not sure I collect all of them, but um, there are several of them that I like. And then I got Botanical Bee by Hands On Design. Um, I saw that, that, actually this was the thing that made me want to buy stuff. <laughs> um, and I do have some of this fabric because I bought some um, to stitch one of her Christmas things from the um, the Jingle Ball. So I'm going to see if I have enough um, that I could stitch that and this. That beautiful bee. And from Plum Street, um, this is Americana, American Mermaid, because mermaid. <laughs> um, and then I like nautical stuff, so this Stacy Nash set appealed to me. Um, as, and then I thought this one was cute and would be a nice um, smaller stitch for spring. And this is the Tulip Fields Pin Keep. And then I decided to get this since it was an exclusive, at least for a while, um, for the market. So this is um, Annie B's 12 Days of Christmas. And um, Stephanie included this freebie from Tiny Modernist. Um, live, in, live in full bloom. Okay, and then from Abby Topknot, I ended up getting the cookbook. If this is the first time I got this, um, because I think it wasn't until last year, too late, I realized that it had um, charts in it. I thought it was just a cookbook, which I wasn't all that interested in but um i am interested in the little charts um and then i got i decided to go ahead and get this now hello from liz matthews cottontail and i also got some of the malachite um fiber on a whim i decided to get the 36 count um, i'm gonna stitch this version um, and i'm planning to start this probably april 1st I just need to pull the threads. I'm sure I have most, if not all, of the DMC. And then again, um, going with the smalls, um, this is uh, Rebel Stitcher Designs, Susie's Peony Cushion, Pin Cushion. I love peonies. Um, and again, I, I was looking for some smaller things, um, especially sort of spring or summery smaller things to stitch. And then I couldn't resist the two new Blackbirds that came out. Um, so both of these have multiple designs in them. Um, for this one, there's that. And I'm thinking, I think that's from the front cover. Um, I think for both of them, the one on the front cover is the main one I'm interested in. Yeah, the one I'm interested in stitching. Okay, and then um, I also got from Lindy Stitches. Sorry, I had all this queued up and then things went kind of kaplooey. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the time here because I don't want to fill this up again. Um, okay, where did it go? Beachcomber, okay. Her beachcomber chart. 
and we'll probably stitch that one sometime this summer. Um, okay, I think that was all my market purchases. Um, and let's see. So I think I mentioned that I had purchased from Northumberland Sampler House, um, her Irish sampler, um, Elizabeth McCarty. And so that that is the um, stitched piece. The, that's a photo of the stitched piece, and this is a photo of the original. Um, and I can't remember if I showed this last time or not, but I did. So I bought the PDF, and I did go ahead and get her linen. So this is 40K, 40 count age sandstone. And the chart um, is um, charted in DMC. So I went ahead and put all the DMC on thread drops that I didn't, the ones I didn't already have on thread drops. I did that this morning because this stitch along starts tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day. Um, <clears throat> so I had one thread bed left that my friend Susan made for me. She made, she sent me some several months ago. So this is going to go in there. And, um, and I went ahead and purchased a needle minder from, this is from, let's see, it's from Cotton and Clay, Laura at Cotton and Clay in the United Kingdom. I bought this on Etsy and it actually came fairly quickly. Um, this is a little shamrock. I thought that would be fun. And then I'm also, I think I mentioned earlier when I showed the project bag from um, Corey Creates that I um, I bought one for St. Patrick's Day and I'm actually gonna, I have it in one of these right now, but I'm gonna put this in there um, and I'm gonna stitch from the PDF. Uh, I did also purchase several, many <laughs> of, um, where did it go? Oh, Wheela Studio. She was having a sale. Um, I can't remember if it was in honor of her birthday or what it was for, but um, so I bought several PDFs. Um, so Anna Om Omen is one that I've been eyeing for several years, so I went ahead and bought that. Um, I thought this was fun. Looks, it's called Destiny, but it looks a very Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, let's see, um, another little red sampler, LW eighteen eighty four. That looks fun. Um, Serena, Serena. It's a Little Mermaid, so of course I had to have that. And. It'd be another one of hers I've been eyeing for a while, the Bee Comes. So it's bees and Bee Scalp, two of my favorite things. Um, and then, oh, let's see, there's no way to show this whole thing without, oh, maybe if I do this way. There we go. With the Needle 2. I'm not sure I'm gonna stitch all this and that might even be over one but I might just stitch this part I really like this part or especially this part um, and then her B sampler I bought way too much, <laughs> um, especially after buying all that market stuff. Spring Parade, I bought both of her Spring Parades. Uh, 
This is set number one. And, um, oh, somebody's having a sow, Sarah Stitchery, or I can't remember, Stitchy Sarah, one of, um, and that's the other set. So I'm, I may start one of those soon to be part of that stitch along. Um, I'm not, I'm trying to decide what to stitch them on. Oh, and then one last thing. The thing I went looking for, along with Anna Omen, is this one, Summer Quaker. Between the mermaid and all the nautical stuff. And I love the lobsters and shrimp and so forth that are sort of buried in the Quaker motifs around the outside. Um, so apparently, there's spring and summer out already, and I think it was the New Hampshire Stitcher mentioned she saw a sneak peek or something um, on social media. I need to check Instagram. Um, and that looked like there might be a winter one coming, and I love seasonal, so I will probably eventually get the others also. That one I definitely want to stitch this summer. Um, I just need to figure out what linen I want to stitch on. Um, I think that's pretty much it uh, for stitchery stuff. Um, excuse me, going out of the frame again. Um, I have worked on knitting a little bit. Um, Earth, Tone Girl, Earth Tones Girl on YouTube is having a sock knitting, books and socks style, or knit along, cal. Um, so I'm working on these. Um, I've been working on these forever. Um, Rose City Rollers. Um, so I try every couple of days to do at least a couple of rounds on that. So I do like to knit my socks two at a time. Um, a lot of sock patterns, including this one. It's um, basically eight stitches to the inch, and I can usually get that with US 2. Um, and I like to stitch with two different circular needles. Um, so I'm less likely to knit, to, to knit them all onto one needle. Um, which I've been known to do. So I might put a couple rounds on that in that today. Um, and then I don't, I guess I saw this. So this is a, um, oh, I know, remember, I saw it on Earth Tone Girls. Twice Sheared Sheep has the sock ruler. Um, Um, that you can use that, that will help you decide when it's time to start your toe if you're like me and mainly knit um, cuff down or to start your heel um, if you tend to knit toe up. Um, and what's nice about it is you can actually just wear it on your wrist. Um, so I need to figure out where... I am on here um, and use it for my um, Rose City Rollers is what those socks are called. Um, and oh, I forgot to mention. So um, the yarn is by Hazel Knits, one of my favorite indie dyers. And um, this is a colorway that is no longer available. It was a club colorway um, called Jubilee. I believe, if I remember correctly, and I forget what this red is, but it was it was meant to go with it. Um, I'd have to look on my Ravelry page to remember exactly. So I decided to check out what else the Twice Sheared Sheep had, and I found these cute little stitch markers that are like the shape of a cat head. And um, it came with a little set, including this little tin to put them in. I can never have enough stitch markers, although I do make my own. Um, and I have plenty of materials to make my own. Um, but I thought those 
little cat heads were really cute. And they actually came nicely packaged, um, kind of like this. So this is actually a row counter. Um, don't really use row counters very much, but um, it, it kind of came as a kit. So I went ahead and, and got this. I'm gonna actually take this out of here and put it in here. Um, but there's a little kitty cat right there. Um, so, so that's my knitting and I think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so this will be probably about an hour when I put it all together. Um, so I think I'm going to end this here and not, oh, actually, I, did I need to talk about anything else? No, I don't think I did. Um. So I'm probably gonna start some springy things before my next, um, the next time I record. I'm definitely gonna start the sampler um, tomorrow um, if I don't actually start it tonight. <laughs> and um, so I will say goodbye and um, I plan to be back within the next month. Um, I, ha I did not mean to wait quite this long. Um, so, so in about a month, um, maybe a little bit less, um, I will be back with what I've been working on um, and maybe have a science corner if there's time. Um, I'll probably, probably talk about bird migration or maybe um, uh, the eclipse that's coming April 8th. We're not quite in in the area that's going to have a full eclipse. Um, so we're thinking about trying to go see it, but we'll see. Okay, so um, thanks again for spending time with me today. And um, like I said, I plan to be back within the next month for an update. And um, just remember to, <clears throat> excuse me, just remember to be kind to yourself and always be kind to your neighbor. Bye.